What's new for uh, the first science update? There's a lot. Now, first of all, there's a new game mode called Exploration Mode that adds progression and long-form gameplay to the existing sandbox mode that we already had. As part of that long-form gameplay, you're able to collect science by exploring in new parts of the Kerbola system, using all new science collection parts to gather and transmit that science, and then use the science that you gather to unlock new nodes on a tech tree, which give you access to new parts. So this new mode is called Exploration Mode because we intend to expand it far beyond just the collection of science through progression. We have a lot more features as we go forward in our roadmap that are going to make use of this tool set. I think the easiest one to call out is resource prospecting and exploration. Really, this mode is all about exploring the universe. It's not so much about purely getting science. We're pushing you out there, and you have to get science to do it. There are a handful of differences between the KSP-1 science mode and KSP-2's science mode. The first one is uh, exploration mode allows you to perform experiments for science. It also allows you to perform missions for science. Missions for science is not in KSP-1's own science mode. You start to see it in career. The other piece in here is functionally uh, how we went about uh, the experiment path itself. One of my favorite examples for this is that uh, early on, we did a play test and said, okay, everybody, go into KSP-1, build a science cart. You get one trip on Kerbin for an hour. How much science are you going to get? And the folks who were newer to the game, you would come back with about like 10 to 20 points. And then you would see the handful of folks who really knew all the intricacies of the system and they were coming back with 200 or so points. Well, there's a lot of invisible systems that come along with science that, that make it complicated, which is in, in many ways fun, but it also drastically has a difference between like the skill floor and the skill ceiling for something as, as you know, that's, I would say, a sub piece of the game. We really want to focus on the difficulties of building and flying and not so much about did I reset this experiment? Did I actually put the report where I need to put it in order to in order to do this? Did I bring the right kind of Kerbal in order to do this sort of thing at all? So a lot of the parts that we've been focusing on are what we want to call their call gameplay relevant. So instead of effectively being a small greeble like a thermometer that you're adding on the side of side of a ship, what we're trying to have is players make conscious design decisions around our science parts. So each part tends to have a challenge associated with it. Kind of the early ones you get will have less challenge. They're bulky, they weigh stuff. That's how you interact with them. But as you get further into the tech tree, the fancier science experiments add new ways to collect science that involve different challenges. So one thing is experiments costing resources. So you'll need to supply certain experiments for the power while they run. So we bring that to science and it's, it's a small change which adds a lot of gameplay depth. So this update is definitely expanding on some of the exploration science features that KSP-1 never really had. Specifically, we've been adding a whole bunch of these things called discoverables to the system. And they're locations on CBs where you can go and find very interesting objects and terrain features sometimes, and you can do science there. Uh, so it really gives you more of a reason to go explore celestial bodies is to find some of these extra things. We would discuss amongst the design team different types of geology that would like this is like a cool thing that exists like on Earth and would be cool to like somehow like sprinkle that to like other areas of the star system. Like kind of things that you would see and go, that that can't be real. Like that's not a real thing. And then you look it up and it's like, oh, like that is a real like geological formation. I'm looking forward to just seeing like people's reactions to finding those things and like again just getting that surprise and that sense of wonder of like looking out in the distance seeing like what's that weird shape in the distance. Uh, Carrie Kerman is the new head of mission control for missions. She's the person who's going to talk to you and give you a brief at the beginning of your mission, if you'd so like, um, to let you know what the context is, what you might want to do, what's happening around the KSC. And then she'll debrief you after every mission to let you know whether your objective was cleared and kind of the aftermath of what happened. There is a light narrative uh, through the missions. There is a, uh, a main mission arc 
uh, that will take you through some things that eagle-eyed members of this community have already discovered. So first we have primary missions, which is basically like your main campaign. You go through, you have one clear objective, and the players get to build onto it and actually get a bit of narrative and a bit of like, dare I say, lore that gives a bit of context to the wider world of what might be out there for, you know, Kerbal Kind. The KSP2 tech tree is improved from KSP1. We effectively took effect all the flaws that we could think of out of the KSP1 tech tree and re-engineered something new that we think makes for a really strong player experience going from the start of zero rocketry all the way to, to where we go. It's also built with an eye towards expandability. So obviously as we go through early access, we've got to add more tech nodes for more cool engines, more cool parts and colonies. And so we've built the tech tree structure out to support that in a really exciting way. This project has gone through so many iterations of reentry heating. So I've been here for a year now and we've got, this is the second that we've investigated. The reentry heating effect is an effect that is generally easy to make when you know the shape of your vehicle. Players can build whatever they want in any shape they want and getting reentry heating to follow those shapes in any kind of atmosphere was and is still a very challenging problem. Performance is a big thing. KSP-1 uses a fur shader. It can be very expensive, especially on large objects, especially in different kind of velocities. It's a very successful effect in some situations. In other situations, it really breaks down. And the, the, the method that we ended up landing on is, well, very performant compared to KSP-1. Man, I really butchered that. <laughs> So we do have a brand new system for ambience per area in the game by whatever type of area it is, we can specify what types of sounds are being played. So in the ocean, you'll hear uh, a sound specific to that area in the ocean. If you're on the shore, if you're in a meadow, if you're in a field with lots of trees, uh, all those have different elements of sound that will play and change no matter where you're at. And they are affected by atmospheric pressure, they're affected by night and day, all that. So we've recorded so much stuff when we were out in, in uh, Florida. Uh, it's hard to get through all, all of it, but I have been yet slowly adding different bits and pieces to it. There's lots of stuff from the runways and things in the VAB. Yeah, and of course, the music that we recorded too. It's been really amazing seeing the reaction of the, of the fans being so positive about the music. I definitely put my hard into this. It's not something I take very lightly. It's something I, I really am passionate about. Um, so I'm glad that those details are not getting lost. I mean, how dumb is that? <laughs> early access has been pretty challenging. When we started early access, we did so with the expectation that if we got the game into players' hands early, we'd be able to get good data uh, from a very large player set and with a game of this complexity it's very helpful to be able to get sort of large amounts of player feedback people really wanting to know like well when when do I get something new here when does my experience of this game fundamentally change and so it's nice finally to be able to bring a, a kind of fundamental step change in terms of the quality of the experience there's a bunch of new stuff that we're putting into this update. And it's not just, you know, clones of KSP-1 features. And a lot of the time, we have some good confidence internally about those features. But, you know, are, are the improvements that we've made to the science experiment system good? Or do they need more work? After four science gets out there, I want to understand what is working, what is not working, um, and be able to be agile with future deliveries of science stuff so that we hit the stuff that's working and we make improvements to the stuff that perhaps didn't turn out as well as we planned. Is it for science? For science. <laughs> or for science. Which but, one is it? I mean, the, the exclamation point is at the end. So if it was for exclamation point science, then it would be, for science. 
but as it is, the exclamation point's on the end. So it's, for science! For science! For science. It's definitely, for science! <laughs>